Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. Frank Pearson. On this Oscar Sunday, in this tabernacle of talent, my sermon is going to be brief. We dedicate the 77th Academy Award services to our men and women in the armed services wherever they serve with our gratitude forever for the sacrifices that they have made in serving our country. We want you all to know that we are not forget we have not forgotten you and we hope that wherever you are if you have the time to see a movie that our film brings you back home again for an hour or so and our prayers for your swift and safe return. <laughs> 30 years ago a brilliant young director cast a brilliant young actor to play the lead in my screenplay for Dog Day Afternoon. And my gratitude and admiration for the actor and for that director has remained absolutely unabated. Please join me in welcoming that Oscar-winning actor, Al Pacino. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I'm here to present the honorary Oscar to Sidney Lumet, who has been directing movies for almost 50 years. It's not the years being honored, it's the quality. And isn't quality the measure, the measure of an artist? From 12 Angry Men, to The Porn Broker, to Dog Day Afternoon, and all the years since and in between, a Sidney Lumet movie has a signature a stamp of individuality, a point of view, a feeling. John Ford, Alfred Hitchcock, Robert Altman, they have a signature, a character, if you will, that make you want to buy a ticket, see their movies. And it's that character which has defined a Sidney Lumet movie. It's real, kinetic energy. You were there as the story was being told. I remember as a kid watching Jason Robards, Jr. in a fabulous performance in a television production of Eugene O'Neill's The Iceman Cometh. I was so inspired by it, it influenced everything that followed in my life as an actor. It was directed by Sidney Lumet. And then I was lucky enough to be directed by Sidney. What does a director do? To quote Sidney, a director directs. He directs you where to go, what to do, sends you there in mind and body. The script instructed me to rob a bank. Sidney told me exactly where to go, what to do, and there I was robbing a bank. He made it happen. If you prayed to inhabit a character, Sidney was the priest who listened to your prayers, helped make them come true. I used to love to watch Sidney direct. And so did others. I mean, a self-propelled torpedo, a whirling dervish on a set, fast. He brought you to life in rehearsal, and then he got you ready. And when you were ready, you didn't have to act, because the process of becoming the character had already been set in motion, and Sidney was the camera. As an old village poet put it to me in the 60s, if you dig it, it's yours. I dug Sidney Lumet back then. I dig him now, because what he had to give, I took and made mine. I'm forever grateful, along with all the other actors and writers who have benefited so much from Sidney's genius. You want to see this boy die because you personally want it, not because of the facts. 
You're a sadist. You don't really mean you'll kill me, do you? We go again. We can do it again. Not without more pay and more chocolate. More pay for him, more chocolate for me. But if the bombers don't respond, then what? The fighters would be ordered to shoot them down. Who gives that order? You do, sir. You crazy bastard! You'd drop up dead men and inspect them if you were ordered to. You're right. All my life, I wanted to be a cop. Hey, it's me, Supergo! But I feel like a criminal because I don't take money. There can't be that much money around without dirty cops. You know what we're fighting out there? So I break a couple of heads. If you're dirty, you're going. I will not give up my partners. Don't you realize that by just saying that, you've confessed you're all in it? <laughs> Swear to me, right here, Pop. Right here. You're clean. 35 back on the counter. I'm as mad as hell. <laughs> I learned a long time ago it's not safe to be a thief. Too young to play a thief. I mean, too! America, man, you know, it's so beautiful, I want to eat it. All I want on this trial was a fair shake. Pushing me to court five days early, I lose my star witness, and I can't get a continuance, and I don't care. I'm going up there, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna let the jury decide. Okay, gang, very good. Just one thing, one thing more. Hey, Mark. Well, you're an FBI agent. You're an FBI agent smuggling liquor. Your brother, the one insisted, we go. He was an alcoholic! Come. Come. I think good work. Sit back. <laughs> Gentlemen, Sidney Lamette. You're very kind, and I thank you. Uh, from the time I did my first movie, I, needless to say, like everyone else, started to fantasize about Oscar. And uh, I was lucky enough to be nominated on the first movie, so I started to fantasize about the speech. And I was real smart, Alec, and I thought I would say something like, uh, I don't want to thank anybody, I did it alone. I, wasn't true, but I thought it'd be a way of getting a little attention. When Frank Pearson called me about receiving this one, of course, I started thinking about the speech again. And I realized that if I totaled up all of the thank yous that you know, I've heard in all of these years, I wouldn't be able to thank all the people that I really want to. It's, and I, I'm not just talking about the glorious talents that I've worked with on both sides of the camera. 
but there are so many with whom I've never even worked that I owe so much. I mean, how do I thank Spielberg and uh, Scorsese and Coppola? And how do I thank Jean Vigo and, and Carl Dreyer and Willie Wyler and Kurosawa and Buster Keaton? And I, I, I'm not mentioning the ones that I really stole from. <laughs> what about the Epsteins for writing a line like, here's looking at you, kid? Or Wilder and Diamond for, well, nobody's perfect. Or Farrago for, mother of God, is this the end of Rico? So what I guess it comes down to is I, I'd like to thank the movies. I know that sounds general, but it's very real to me. I've got the best job in the best profession in the world. So I just want to thank all of it. And of course, the ones who paid more dues than I have. Thank you, Pidey, Amy, Jenny. See you later. Annette Benning, Kate Winslet, and the Oscar for Best Cinematography. The 77th Annual Academy Awards on ABC, brought to you by Diet Pepsi, Light Crisp, Refresh. Please welcome the beautiful young star of the Phantom of the Opera, Emmy Woo! Rossum. Being in the Phantom of the Opera was a remarkable experience. Andrew Lloyd Webber and Charles Hart wrote the third nominated song especially for the film. Stories don't always end happily ever after, and this song gives voice to the Phantom's struggle to face a solitary future. We are pleased to have the composer, Andrew Lloyd Webber, accompanying on the piano tonight as Learn to Be Lonely is performed by the wonderfully talented Beyonce. <laughs>
sung two songs, Janet Jackson, and nothing has come out yet. Wow, Jay-Z don't play that. Now, we would like to acknowledge the wonderful Academy Award Show Orchestra, directed for the 17th time by Oscar winner Bill Conti. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, some, uh, here's some great news. So far, 10 awards have been given out and not one of the winners has tested positive for steroids. Okay, so we're, we're cool there. Now, please welcome comedy superstar, Jeremy Irons. So good to be recognized at last. You have to be careful who you say this to in this, in this town, but there are some movies that, though they're wonderful, they are maybe just a tad too long. I hope they missed. <laughs> and, and then there are, there are some that are so good that we never want them to end. Those often fall into this category, where brevity has its own reward. The nominees for Best Live Action Short are... Everything in this country must, Gary McKendry. Little Terrorist, Ashvin Kumar. 7.35 in the morning, Macho Vigalondo. Two Cars, One Night, Taika Waititi and Ainsley Gardner. Wasp, Andrea Arnold. And the Oscar goes to... Wasp, Andrea Arnold. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Andrea Arnold. This is truly overwhelming. I'm not really used to this kind of thing. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who worked on the film. Everyone worked extremely hard. They know who they are, and I'm, the beers are on me when we get home. Um, and uh, what can I say? Um, in English, we'd say, um, I'd say that this is the dog's bollocks. Thank you very much. <laughs> you. Welcome, two-time Oscar nominee, Laura Linney. A century ago, when cartoonist Windsor McKay drew his first animated cartoon, he drew it alone, all 4,000 cells, and pioneered the art of animation. Ever since, it has been an industry that has amused billions of people in millions of audiences, in thousands of theaters, in hundreds of towns, and led to awards like the one I am about to bestow. The nominees for Best Short Animated Film are... Birthday Boy. Sejong Park and Andrew Gregory. <laughs> Go for Broke, Jeff Fowler and Tim Miller. <laughs> Lorenzo, Mike Gabriel and Baker Bloodworth. <laughs> Guard Dog, Bill Plimpton. <laughs> Ryan, Chris Landry. And the Oscar goes to Ryan Chris Landon. This is the first Academy Award and second nomination for Chris Landry. I am here tonight because of the grace and humility of one guy watching from Montreal, Ryan Larkin. I dedicate this award to you. And I'm sharing this award with Steve Hoban from Copper Heart Entertainment. Steve, you and Mark Smith were with me on this from the very beginning. You guys are troopers. And to Marcy Page from the National Film Board of Canada, you guys are visionaries in Canadian filmmaking. To the Canada Council for the Arts and uh, Seneca College, Dave Bass and my crew, you guys know who you are. You're the most inspired and dedicated pe people I have ever worked with. 
and to my darling Jody, I love you so much. And finally, to the Academy for continuing to support short filmmaking in all its forms. I cannot tell you how cool that is. Ladies and gentlemen, four-time Academy Award nominee, Kate Winslet. As long as we're talking about motion pictures, let's say a few words about the people who actually capture the motion in pictures, the cinematographers. Long before they become members of the Academy, they have to understand a great many things, like optics, chemistry, lights and shadows, and most importantly, where to put the camera. Here are the nominees. Robert Richardson for The Aviator. Zhao Xiaoding for House of Flying Daggers. Caleb Deschanel for The Passion of the Christ. John Matheson for The Phantom of the Opera. Bruno Del Bonnell for A Very Long Engagement. And the Oscar goes to... Robert Richardson for The Aviator. This is the second Oscar and fifth nomination for Robert Richardson. He took home his first Oscar in this category for JFK. Well, I get two there. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much. Uh, this evening for me is dedicated to my mother who has spent the last 45 days in the hospital and I'd like to say thank you to all the nurses and the doctors that have taken care of her as well as her friends. Uh, I love you, Mom. Thank you. Just ahead, Salma Hayek, Penelope Cruz, and the fourth Oscar-nominated song when the 77th Annual Academy Awards return. Okay, now it's time that we handle some Oscar business, okay? Every year, the votes for the Academy Awards are tabulated by the firm of Price, Waterhouse, and Coopers. Here are two of their accountants, Murray Sugarman and David Moskowitz. <laughs> What's the problem, okay? These guys get me my money by all means necessary. <laughs> okay, you won't be able to take your eyes off these next four presenters, Penelope Cruz and Selma Hayek. Our first category is sound mixing, where the talented efforts of the production and post-production sound mixing Combine artistry with technology to create intimate portraits and vibrant soundscapes which allow the audience to fully experience the filmmaker's vision. And here are the people who did an outstanding job in accomplishing that task. Tom Fleischmann and Peter Little for The Aviator. Randy Tom, Gary A. Ripto, and Doc Kane for The Incredibles. Oh, I love you. Wow. Whoa. Susan, it's gripped with the ice. It's frozen over the truck. 
Randy Tom, Tom Johnson, Denny Sands, and William B. Kaplan for the Polar Express. Scott Mulan, Greg Orloff, Bob Beamer, and Steve Cantamesa for Ray. Let's see you scurry out of this. Mm. Kevin O'Connell, Greg T. Russell, Jeffrey J. Habush, and Joseph Geisinger for Spider-Man 2. And the Oscar goes to Scott Millen, Greg Orla, Bob Millen, and Steve Cadamesa. This is the third Academy Award and sixth nomination for Scott Milan and Bob Beamer. This is the first win and nomination for Greg Orloff and Steve Cantamesa. Wow. Um, uh, it's, it's impossible to express uh, how lucky we were to work on a film about uh, the gentleman Ray Charles. Um, the storytelling allowed us to use sound, and we were very lucky that Taylor Hackford, our director, um, gave us that freedom. And uh, we have to thank Stuart Benjamin, our producer. We have to thank everybody at Bristol Bay. We have to thank uh, Bill Brown and Lisa Dennis and Paul Hirsch, our picture editor, and uh, sound editorial uh, uh, Karen Baker Landers and Per Hallberg. We have to thank um, oh, 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 Kurt Sobel, our music editor. Guys, and uh, please, we'd like to thank our sports staff, Fred Peck. And I'd like to thank my crew, Gary Thomas and Scott LaRue, and Aaron Zeller. Thank you. This next award is for sound editing. The sound editor takes all the usable original auditory elements involved in a film, plus the new production track, which includes sound effects, dialogue, and other sounds, and delivers them to the sound mixer. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so here are the people who are nominated this year for sound editing. <laughs> Michael Silvers and Randy Tom for The Incredibles. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, my back! Randy Tom and Dennis Leonard for the Polar Express. <laughs> Paul and Jay Audison for Spider-Man 2. And the Oscar goes to... Michael Silvers and Randy Tom for the Incre Incredible. This is the first Academy Award and third nomination for Michael Silver's multiple nominee Randy Tom takes home his second Oscar. Thank you so much. Certain Academy Awards like sound and visual effects and editing are sometimes referred to as technical awards. They are not technical awards. They're given for artistic decisions. And sometimes we... Sometimes we make them better than others, and I guess we made a couple of good ones on this one. Thank you so much, Brad Bird and Skywalker Sound. Lisa and Austin, this is for you. I'd like to share this with my superheroes, the sound editing crew, and Lois, Rebecca, Emma, Bonnie, I love you. Thank you, everybody. The nominated song I am so proud to introduce tonight. It's from the extraordinary film, The Motorcycle Diaries, about the lives of the two passionate young idealists, Alberto Granado and Ernesto Guevara. The name is Al Otro Lado del Rio, or The Other Side of the River. It was written and beautifully sung in Spanish by Jorge Dexler. So for those of you who don't speak Spanish, I would like to translate a portion of the song's powerful message into English. Overall, I believe not everything is lost. 
On this side of the world, what is not ceased is useless. I believe I have seen the light on the other side of the river. For those of you who don't speak English either, trust me, it's a wonderful song. <laughs> to pay tribute to the first song in Spanish ever to be nominated by an Academy Award, please welcome the multi-talented Antonio Banderas and the legendary Carlos Santana performing Jorge Dexler's Al Otro Lado del Río. <laughs> We'll be back. Please welcome Academy Award nominee, Natalie Fortman. They've brilliantly chronicled real stories about lives impacted by autism, racial and religious prejudice, homelessness, and complex family relationships. They are this year's outstanding nominees for Best Documentary Short Subject, and I applaud them. <laughs> Autism.
Autism is a World, Geraldine Wurzberg. The children of Lenin Gradsky, Hanna Pollock and Andrzej Zielinski. Hardwood, Hubert Davis and Aaron Faith Young. Mighty Times, The Children's March, Robert Hudson and Bobby Houston. Sister Rose's Passion, Orrin Jacoby and Steve Califer. And the Oscar goes to Mighty Times, The Children's March, Robert Hudson and Bobby Houston. This is the first Oscar and second nomination for Robert Hudson and Bobby Houston. We did it. <laughs> Go ahead, start talking. I don't know about many of you, but I've been sitting in a bathtub since I was eight years old practicing this Oscar speech. <laughs> And it never quite stayed the same. First off, I want to thank the Academy of Motion Pictures for this award we both got. Um, Bob and I live together and we work together. Uh, if you're watching us on TV, don't try that at home. <laughs> he directs, I produce. Um, I want to first start off by thanking HBO um, for their knowledge of documentaries for 15, 20 years has really brought it to the forefront now. I want to thank Chris Albrecht, Dolores Morris, Sheila Nevins. And together with this last film, we had a new uh, partner to work with HBO with Southern Poverty Law Center. <laughs> Oh man, they, they gave him the Oscar on stage. <laughs> Next year they're gonna give out Oscars in the parking lot. It's gonna be <laughs> like, be like a, a drive through Oscar Lane. Get your Oscar and a McFlurry and keep it moving. Uh, okay. Let's see who's. No, 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 no. Johnny Depp. Love Johnny Depp. Prince in the house. Oprah's here. How you doing? Oprah is so rich, I saw John Kerry proposing to her just an hour ago. Uh, <laughs> okay, and our next presenter is a two-time Oscar nominee and Oprah's favorite white man, John Travolta. Come on. <laughs> The category is original score. It's the music you hear that underscores or accompanies the action in a film. Whether someone is walking down a New York street with attitude, or the superheroes chasing the bad guys, also with attitude. Every emotion is heightened with music. The five nominated composers in this category have demonstrated their ability to consistently hit the right note. And they are... Finding Neverland by Jan A.P. Kaczmarek. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by John Williams. Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events by Thomas Newman. The Passion of the Christ by John Debney. The Village by James Newton Howard. And the Oscar goes to Jan A.P. Kaczmarek for Finding Neverland. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Jan A.P. Kaczmarek. I cannot tell you how happy I am, and thank you, Academy. Uh, Finding Neverland was a great adventure, and I'm so proud to be part of it. 
Mark Foster should be here. Mark, thank you for your subtle mind, for your incredible talent also. Uh, Richard is here. Richard Glassman, a man who truly understands power of music. I'm very thankful for this as well. And then my wife, Elisbieta, who always surprises me with her intellectual passion and incredible taste. She's responsible for many good notes I, I've written. <laughs> and uh, my friend and agent, Anita Greenspan, thank you so much. Uh, who's left? Many people, but uh, I, I'm too overwhelmed to really go 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 on I, I should certainly take opportunity to uh, as a first person in the room to thank Harvey Weinstein for his support and I, I, and and very thankful as well for supporting Finding Neverland and my case uh, musicians usually forgotten but extraordinary people who made music alive and without them the best music just doesn't exist so thank you very much my collaborators in Poland and here in America Christopher Rafał Leszek, thank you so much. I'm very, very honored. Thank you. He's nominated for a Best Directing Oscar tonight. Welcome, Martin Scorsese. Gene Herschel was an actor from Denmark who made his own mark in Hollywood playing saintly doctors on screen and whose off-screen character was equally admirable. His concern and uh, care and for the comfort of all workers who helped make movies inspired our Academy to establish a humanitarian award in his name. Now, the Herschel Award is not given every year, but this year it's been voted to veteran film executive Roger Mayer, whose humanitarian efforts add luster to the golden statuette named Oscar. Like Herschel himself, Roger's one of the good guys. Roger Mayer's long involvement with and brilliant leadership of the Motion Picture and Television Fund is without precedent. This compassionate group acts as a safety net, providing charitable, social, and medical assistance to those in our industry. The MPTF takes care of its own like no other. In the arena of film preservation, a cause close to my own heart, preserving and restoring motion pictures. As founding chair of the National Film Preservation Foundation, the collector and protector of cinematic treasures, he has ensured that our past lives on for future moviegoers. With his crucial work in saving both films and those that make films, he has earned this award twice over. For all of the love he has shown for all of us, we gratefully present this Gene Herschel Award to my friend, Roger Mayer. Thank you so much. Marty, thank you for your kind introduction, and to John Bloom for that wonderful film, by the way. As many of you know, Marty's Film Foundation has been a leader in the film preservation movement, just as Gene Herschel was a leader in the Motion Picture and Television Fund. And interestingly enough, he contributed the land on which our hospital, retirement community, and Alzheimer's unit were built. So there's a real connection there. As for film preservation, I must give credit to the six board chairmen, seven production heads during my 25 years at MGM who either backed our endeavors or weren't quite sure what we were doing, so let it happen anyway. <laughs> and then came Ted Turner and his cohorts in Atlanta, who understood the importance of all this and kept it going, even when funds were pretty short. Preservation and restoration are now led by the studios and organizations nationwide, such as the Museum of Modern Art in Eastman House in New York, the UCLA and our own Academy Archives here in Los Angeles, and most particularly, the Library of Congress. 
And as I thank the Academy's Board of Governors for this great honor, I want to remind all of you that the Academy itself, namely you, support film preservation and health care through both the Motion Picture and Television Fund and the National Film Preservation Foundation. So we sincerely thank you. And of course, most importantly, thanks to my family, all of whom are here tonight. My children, Patty and Larry, daughter-in-law, Jennifer, sister, Florence, granddaughters, Natasha and Anna, and most especially, my wife of 52 and a half years, Pauline. <laughs> 52 and a half years, and they say nothing less in Hollywood? Well, love really does, taking care of our own does, and the art of film does if we properly preserve it. So I'm going to keep at it and hope you will continue your support. Thank you very, very much. Please welcome three-time Academy Award nominee, Annette Benning. From the first piano player who pounded out bars of Rossini's William Tell Overture during a chase sequence in a silent movie house, music has been film's handmaiden. Music provokes laughter, encourages tears, awes and frightens, and comforts us. Our musicians evoke the exciting promise of an overture, the pageantry of a parade, and the solemn dirge of a farewell. Now here, an internationally acclaimed soloist performing the Sarabande's excerpt from Suite 6 by Johann Sebastian Bach as a requiem for movie memory makers who left us last year. Ladies and gentlemen, Yo-Yo Ma.
somebody. Okay, our next presenter hasn't done a lot of movies, but he's been in every music video since 1983. He told you he wasn't going to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Combs. So this is the Oscars. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> okay. I'll... <laughs> Our fifth and final nominated song is from a very hip and creative film, The Polar Express. The words and music are by Glenn Ballard and Alan Silvestri. The song is called Believe. And with so many negative things going on in the world, this song has a very real and powerful message. So listen up and hook into that inner child and do like the song says. Believe will be sung tonight by two stars who can make believers out of anybody. Please welcome Beyonce and Josh Groban. incredible. 
See, the chemistry there, Jay-Z, I would not trust my woman with Josh Groban, you know. I'd, I'd go get her if I was you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Academy Award winner, Prince. Now that you've heard all the nominated songs, it's time to announce who will receive the Oscar for original song. Just to refresh your memories, here are the five selections. Accidentally in love. From Shrek 2, Accidentally in Love. Music by Adam Durrett, Charles Gillian, Jim Bogus, David Imer Gluck, Matthew Malley, and David Bryson. Lyrics by Adam Durrett and Daniel Victory. From the Motorcycle Diaries, Alotro Latro Del Rio, music, by, music and lyric by Jorge Drexler. From the Polar Express, Believe, music and lyric by Glenn Ballard and Alan Silvestri. From the Phantom of the Opera, Learn to be Lonely, music by Andrew Lloyd Webber, lyric by Charles Hart. From the chorus, Look to Your Past, music by Bruno Kule, lyric by Christoph Barat uh, Tihe. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to Jorge Drexler for All Trail Lapa Del Rio from the Motorcycle Diaries. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Jorge Drexler. Clavo mi remo en el agua, llevo tu remo en el mío. Creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río. El día le irá pudiendo poco a poco al frío. Creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río. Chao. Thank you. Gracias. Chao. Last year, he took home the Oscar for performance by an actor in a leading role. Welcome, Sean Penn. Forgive my compromised sense of humor, uh, but I did want to answer our host's question about who Jude Law is. Uh, he's, he's one of our finest actors, and, and what, what Jude and all other talented actors know is that for every greatly talented actor, there are five actresses who are nothing short of magic. And the Academy's the Academy's favorite five this year are. <clears throat> Annette Benning in Being Julia. Just admit it, Michael. You've never understood what it means to carry a play. I'm the only one who takes it seriously, Michael. You know that. All you do is count the money and think it's a bloody great lark. Take the play off. Oh, Pop, I won't like it. To hell with Dolly! Catalina Sandino Moreno in Maria Full of Grace. ¿Y la plata de Lucy? ¿Cómo así que la plata de Lucy? Quiero darle la plata a la familia. Usted no tiene nada que ver con eso. Pero es que ella se murió haciendo esto. Se encontró en el cadáver. Yo lo único que quiero es que usted me dé la plata para yo entregársela a la hermana. Además, después de todo lo que usted le hicieron, es su responsabilidad. Imelda Staunton in Vera Drake. Oh, no, why are you? Why are we here? Because of what I do. Because of what you do? Yes. What is it that you do, Mr. Drake? I help young girls out. <laughs> Hilary Swank in Million Dollar Baby. Wasting your time. I told you I don't train girls. Sasha might change your mind. 
There's dozens of trainers who train girls. You won't have any trouble finding one. You'll hardly need a dozen, boss. You'll do fine. Don't call me boss now. I'm not your boss, and don't you be calling me that. Well, are you ready to work? Yes, sir. If I stop calling you boss, will you train me? Kate Winslet, in eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Have you ever shot the horns in Sure. Ooh. That's it! Yeah. I see you, man. Book slave there for like... Five years now? I once thought I would remember you. It might be the hair. What might? It changes a lot, the color. So that's why you might not recognize me. And the Oscar goes to... Hillary Swank. Million dollars, baby. This is the second Academy Award for Hilary Swank, who took home her first Oscar for her leading role in Boys Don't Cry. She's also the first female in Academy history to be nominated for playing a boxer. I don't know what I did in this life to, to deserve all this. I, um... I'm just a girl from a trailer park who had a dream. I never thought this would ever happen, let alone be nominated. And a working actor, for that matter, and now this. I thank the Academy. I am eternally grateful for this great honor. I would also like to acknowledge my fellow nominees, um, Annette, Amilda, Kate, and Catalina. Your work inspires me beyond words. I am going to start by thanking my husband because I'd like to think I learned from past mistakes. Chad, you're my everything. Thank you for your support. It means the world. I would never be standing here if it weren't for the, each and every one of the brilliant people I had surrounding me, supporting me, and believing in me. Tom Rosenberg, Gary Lucchese, thank you for sending me this most marvelous script. You will no never know how grateful I am. Paul Haggis for writing this beautiful script. Our other producers extraordinaire, Al Reddy, Clint, Rob Lorenz, um, Phyllis Huffman, our casting director, um, my trainers, Grant Roberts and Hector Roca, you pushed me further than I ever thought I could push myself up to that last pound, actually to that last ounce, I thank you. My sparring partners were, who were so patient, and everyone at Gleason's, um, uh, let's see, um, well, the ever amazing Morgan Freeman, Um, Tom Stern, our cinematographer, you are brilliant. Joel Cox, our editor, you're amazing. Um, you know, um, I'm going to thank my mom for believing in me from the beginning, my dad for his support, um, my agents, Josh Lieberman, um, Tony Lip, Kelly Tiffin, John Campisi, Jason Weinberg, my manager. Uh-uh, you can't do that because I haven't gotten to Clint yet. I saved him for the end. Um, uh, Carl Austin, Jeff Bernstein, my, my lawyers, and then Clint, Clint Eastwood, thank you for allowing me to go on this journey with you. Um, thank you for believing in me. You're my Makushla. Thank you. Alan Horn and War Warner Brothers as well, thank you. And you know what? Wait! Twine Anton! Twine Anton! We'll be back with Gwyneth Paltrow and the Oscars for Best Foreign Language Film and Original Screenplay. Hi, and we're back. All right, I just want to say, uh, Sean Penn, my accountants would like a word with you. Our next presenter is the first woman to ever breastfeed an apple. Please welcome Academy Award winner, Gwyneth Paltrow. All 
I really wanted to provide you with synopsis of this year's best foreign language film in their respective languages. But wouldn't you know it, there isn't enough time. So here are the nominees for best foreign language film. As it is in heaven from Sweden, Kai Pollock. The Chorus from France, Christophe Baratier. Downfall from Germany, Oliver Hirschbiegel. <laughs> the Sea Inside from Spain, Alejandro Amenabar. Hola. Perdona que no te doy la mano. ¿Cómo que no? Yesterday, from South Africa, Daryl Root. And the Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to España for Mar Adentro. Accepting the award, Alejandro Emanabat. This is the fourth Academy Award and 19th nomination for Spain. Thank you so much. Um, this, is, this film is based on a man who, despite his desire for death, um, spread so much life around him. So the first third part of this award goes for him, belongs to him, whatever he is. The second third part is for uh, um, Javier Bardem for his outstanding performance <laughs> and his generosity. And the another third part, uh, goes to, of course, my friend and producer, Fernando Bobaira, uh, to the fabulous cast and, uh, and crew for being so focused on this movie since the very beginning. And uh, for me, I'm just so pleased because it seems that I'm in charge of keeping it in one piece for the rest of my life. So thank you so much. Please welcome Coach Carter. Academy Award nominee, Samuel L. Jackson. Coming up, the Oscars for Best Actor and Directing when the 77th Annual Academy Awards continue. Please welcome our next presenter, Academy Award winner, Charlize Theron. Their performances were all outstanding. And here are the nominees for best performance by an actor in a leading role. Don Cheadle in Hotel Rwanda. They say you led the massacre. I led no massacres. Do you think they're going to believe you? You will tell them the truth. I will tell them nothing unless you help me. What, what are you going to do? Shoot me? Shoot me. Please shoot me. It would be a blessing. I will pay you. Johnny Depp in Finding Neverland. She went to Neverland. And you can visit her anytime you like. You should just go there yourself. Leonardo DiCaprio in The Aviator. Actresses are cheap in this town, darling. I got a lot of money. Howard. 
Hey, this is Benito. No, no, this, this is exactly me. You come in here out of the blue and tell me you're leaving me just like that, and you have the nerve to expect graciousness? I expect you to face the situation like an adult who... Don't adult. talk down to me. Don't you ever talk down to me. You are a movie star. Nothing more. Clint Eastwood and Million Dollar Baby. What did your manager do? You were a hell of a fighter, a lot better than Willie. He gets you a title fight, or did he just bust you out, banging your head against other people's fists until you lost your eye? I had my shot. Yeah, well, I remember. And excuse me if I didn't want my fighter spending the second half of his life cleaning up other people's spit. Jamie Foxx and Ray. Lennox has done pretty good money-wise on my records, haven't we? Yes, we've done very well, Ray. Yeah, now you were the ones that taught me that making a record is business and find the best business deal that you can. Now, 75 cents of every dollar and owning my own masters is a pretty damn good deal. Can you manage it? And the Oscar goes to... Jamie Foxx and Ray. This is the first Academy Award and second nomination for Jamie Foxx. He's the tenth person to be nominated in both acting categories in the same year. I guess we gotta do it again. Oh! Oh! Yeah, you ready. That's to Ray Charles. Give it up for Ray Charles and his beautiful legacy. And thank you, Ray Charles, for living. I got so many people to thank tonight. And first, I'm gonna start it out with Taylor Hackford. Taylor, you took a chance, man. I mean, that love for Ray Charles was deep down in the earth somewhere, and you opened it up, and it's cracked open, and it's spilling, and Everybody is drowning in this love, and I thank you for taking a chance on this film, and thank you for waiting 15 years to get me to do it. Uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, Crusader. I want to thank, I want to thank my, my agents. I want to thank Rick Kurtzman. I want to thank uh, Kim Hodgett. I want to thank uh, Steve Smoot. I want to thank my managers, Jamie King and Marcus King. Let's, uh, let's live this African-American dream. It's beautiful. I'm glad I'm with you, and I ain't never leaving you, so I love you. Uh, I got a chance to meet a whole lot of people experiencing this. Uh, and other people I want to thank, I want to thank my, my sister, 4 foot 11, uh, of, of nothing but pure love. I want to thank my daughter for telling me just before I got up here, if you don't win, Dad, you're still good. <laughs> I'm just look, I just see Oprah and I see Hallie. I just want to say your names. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk to you later, both of you. <laughs> uh, because Oprah got a, uh, allowed me to meet somebody uh, by the name of Sidney Portier. And uh, yes, Sidney Portier said, I saw you once and I looked in your eyes and there was a connection. And he says, I give to you responsibility. So I'm taking that responsibility tonight. And uh, thank you, Sydney. Uh, this, is the, this is probably going to be the toughest part of this, this speech. My daughter shares uh, uh, my, my grandmother's name, uh, Marie. My grandmother's name is Estelle Marie Talley. And she's not here tonight. And this is going to be the toughest part. But she was my first acting teacher. She told me, stand up straight. Put your shoulders back. Act like you got some sense. We would go places, and I would wild out. And she says, act like you've been somewhere. Uh, and then when I would act a fool, she would, she would beat me. She would whoop me. And she could get an Oscar for the way she whooped me, because she was great at it. And after she whipped me, she would talk to me. 
and tell me why she whipped me. She said, I want you to be a Southern gentleman. And uh, she still talks to me now. Only now she talks to me in my dreams. And I can't wait to go to sleep tonight because we've got a lot to talk about. I love you. We'll be back with this year's best motion picture Oscar. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Academy Award winner, Julia Roberts. Happy birthday, Marva. It is my honor to present the Oscar for Achievement in Directing. Every one of them did an extraordinary job of bringing their vision to the screen. The nominees are... For The Aviator, Martin Scorsese. The Million Dollar Baby, Clint Eastwood. For Ray, Taylor Hackford. For Sideways, Alexander Payne. For Vera Drake, Mike Lee. And the Oscar goes to Clint Eastwood, the Million Dollar Baby. This is the third Academy Award nomination for Clint Eastwood in this category. He was previously nominated for Mystic River and Unforgiven, for which he won a directing Oscar in 1992. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, my wife, who's my best pal down here, and uh, my mother, who uh, was here with me in 1993. She was only 84 then, but she's uh, here with me again tonight, and she just... Uh, mm -hmm. So at 96, I'm thanking her for her genes. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was a wonderful adventure. It, it takes a, uh, to make a picture in 37 days, takes a well-oiled machine, and that well-oiled machine is a crew. Uh, the, the, the cast, of course, you've met a lot of them, but, uh, but there's still, there's, there's still Margo and Anthony and, and, and Michael and Mike and, and, and uh, Jay and, and, and everybody else who was so fabulous in this cast. And, uh, and the, the crew, uh, Campanelli and, uh, and Billy Coe, and of course Tom Stern, who was fantastic. And, uh, and, and Henry Bumstead, the great Henry Bumstead, who is <clears throat> the head of our crack geriatrics team. <laughs> and, uh, and Henry uh, and uh, Jack Taylor and Dick Goddard, all those guys, and, and, and Walt. And, Everybody, I, I can't think of everybody now. I'm going to get a blank, but uh, uh, Warren, you were right. And, and uh, thank you for your confidence early in the evening. And I'm just uh, lucky to be here, lucky to be uh, still uh, uh, working. And I, I watched Sidney Lamette out there, who's 80, and, and I figure, hey, I'm just a kid. I'll just, I just, uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do yet. So thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Michael Mann, Graham King, producer. Finding Neverland, Richard and Gladstein and Nellie Bellflower, producer. Million Dollar Baby, Clint Eastwood, Albert S. Ruddy and Tom Rosenberg, producer. 
Ray, Taylor Hackford, Stuart Benjamin. Hey, that's our show for tonight. I hope everybody had fun. I love doing the show. Good night, Brooklyn! Yo!